So the whole trick of rendering with Octane, of course, is to reduce noise and decrease render times. And the videos in this section are designed to give you some tips on how to do that. Of course, every scene is a little bit different. Most of the settings that you'll be working with in order to optimize your render are found in the render kernel. And you can locate those settings by going to Octane, Octane Settings. And you'll see here we have a tab called Kernels. And this scene is currently using the Path Tracing Kernel. So I can switch between Direct Lighting, which is a little bit faster but not as physically accurate, Path Tracing, which is more physically accurate but a little bit more render intensive, and then PMC, which is the most accurate and also most render intensive. So it's been mentioned in the other movies on kernels, max samples is the most important setting. This determines how many samples are gonna be calculated before an octane stops working on the scene. So the more samples you have, uh, of course, the uh, cleaner your scene will be, the less noisy it'll be, but also it'll take longer to render. A few other tips that can help you reduce the render times, you can lower the GI clamp. If it's not too low, if it doesn't adversely affect the way the scene looks, bringing this down from its default setting, which tends to be fairly high, uh, can really reduce the amount of render time um, devoted to the scene. We can also increase parallel samples and max tile samples without uh, affecting the uh, look of the render too much. If you have a powerful machine that has a lot of GPUs available, uh, increasing these two settings will help to reduce render times. We have a video in this section on adaptive sampling, uh, so you can take a look at that video. That can help you also reduce noise and also focus your um, the amount of time that Octane spends on the problem areas of the scene without spending too much time on the areas that are easy to render. One thing I like to do is turn on irradiance mode. So this uh, just shows you the diffuse lighting in the scene and uh, it can help you identify areas that might be especially noisy or blown out. So if with the radiance mode turned on, you can see that these lights are very, very strong. And of course, really strong lights in a setting like this might actually introduce a lot of noise. So by turning on a radiance mode and adjusting the uh, strength of the light emission or the power, I can help to um, reduce some of the noise in the scene and make it look a little bit nicer. So these are set to 60, so if we bring these down to 40 and re-render the scene, that can help uh, see where the noise is or reduce the, some of the noise. Now there's another trick you can do for reducing the noise. This takes advantage of Octane Standalone. So there's a video at the end of this section that uh, details how you export a scene from Octane uh, for Cinema 4D to Octane Standalone. And one of the reasons you might want to do this is so that you can take advantage of Octane Standalone's uh, AI denoiser option, which is new and has yet to be implemented in Cinema 4D, but it will be fairly soon. So let's take a look at that really quickly. So I've exported the scene from Cinema 4D as an Orbix file. So you can see it's called cantina.orbix, and this is open in Octane Standalone. Of course, the interface is very different, but the settings are the same. It just takes a little bit of uh, practice to learn how to get to them. And you can see that I even have some animation on the camera, and this animation was set up in Cinema 4D. So if I select the render target, that's what will start the render to appear here in the viewport. So here's the render target. And if I go into the settings here, you can see that I am using the path tracing kernel, but my max samples have lowered down to 84. It's still fairly noisy, but the great thing about Octane Standalone is the denoiser, which allows you to get a nice clean render using fewer samples. So I've set this down to 84, and I'm gonna go down to the uh, camera imager settings. So let's collapse this. Go down to tone map settings under imager, and turn on spectral AI denoiser. So I have denoiser turned on, and I hear the settings right here. But in order to see the results, I need to click on this little button right here. So I have main and denoised beauties, or D main. So if I turn this on, you see that the noise clears up really quickly and suddenly I have a nice looking scene in no time. So it's still only 84 samples, but it's much smoother. So if it looks a little bit blotchy in some areas, you can start to increase the samples a little bit in order to reduce that blotchiness. So I'll just go back up to render settings, the render settings and under kernel quality 
increase that samples to maybe let's try like 120 or something like that. And then it'll continue to render and I can just tune it that way. So that's a great advantage of using Octane standalone. And so uh, if you take a look at the videos in this section, at the end, there is a movie on how to export your uh, Cinema 4D scenes in the Orbix format so that you can open them up in Octane standalone and take advantage of things like the denoiser.